way to go. And so friction, gone. And that's what I meant. If it's been a one degree angle, yes, there would be friction, but I eliminated that by telling you it is level ground. There's no tension. Pardon? There's no tension. Oh, no tension. Yeah. Uh, the hash marks here, if you look at some old assignments, sometimes I have the hash marks, sometimes I don't. Um, on the complex force diagram, there's usually ground involved, but ground is often overlooked when people are actually drawing arrows. If I remember, I put the hash marks in there. Usually the hash marks indicate an object that we are going to assume for the purpose of the problem, it is not moving. But there's no other. Okay. Is there a normal force? Yes. Gravitational force? Yes. All right. So let's do gravitational force first. I always find that the simplest. What is the direction of the gravitational force acting on the box? Down. Up. Go down. And on the ground? Acting up. Yeah. I think I'm in pair, so I got my two there. And now normal force. It's uh, up and down as well. It is up and down uh, on the box. Which way is it? Sorry, down on the box, up on the ground. It's up on the box. Up on the box. Okay. And fight. <laughs> it's up on the box. It's yeah, because the box. they need to be like balanced. Well, yeah. They need, it needs to be like balanced out. You've got these two pulling towards each other, so you need some pulling opposites. <laughs> if it were down, and I'm going to write something up here, I'm going to draw it down. It, the the yeah. normal force on the box is up. I'm gonna draw it down. Don't feel like you have to draw it like that, or if you do, please make a note that this is wrong. If it is down, that indicates I've got two forces acting on this box. This box will accelerate downwards. Okay. If a box is sitting on the ground, I think most of us can accept a box sitting on the ground, from our point of view, probably is not moving. Well, I thought when you said you were leaning on the wall, the wall is pushing on you and you're pushing on the wall. Yes. So wouldn't the box be pushing on the ground and the ground be pushing on the box? Absolutely. But it's the forces that are acting on the box and not from the box. Oh, so, okay. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ground is pushing up on the box because the box is not falling, so there's got to be something holding it up. Right. Okay. I don't think I ever explained why I used the letter Y for normal force. Because it looks nice. What'd you say? I said I don't think. Okay. I used the letter Y because my high school physics textbook used the letter Y. And because we don't use it for anything else. Now, some people have an objection to that and they use other letters. I think I did talk about this one last. Don't use capital N. Please don't use capital N. That's <laughs> Newton's. Yeah. yeah. West. So, in the in our first picture, the, the box is, is actually on the, the ground. But why is it in the air if there's some air? Oh, all I've done is I've drawn a box so I can draw arrows on it. So, like usually, that like in that second drawing, the, the box would be like on the ground. But you just did that so you can understand like which force is which. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Now it's in the same orientation as that is just. Because for me, visually, I know the box is above the ground. I could have drawn the box, this box right here, down here, and it doesn't change any of the answers. It's just easier to visualize things being pulled together. And so by the gravitational force or repelled by the normal force. So when I did the relative directions, that assumes the same orientation that they are in the problem. Okay. Oh, wait, and, and why is it so? I get why there's normal force in the, the box on the ground, but why wouldn't there be normal force for a box falling? Requirement for normal force is contact. Oh, okay. And over here, there's no contact between box and ground yet. I have that same question. I assume we need to draw those arrows about the same length in either direction to show that it can't pull out, or does that not matter for the box diagram? It, the force diagram? Whether they're going to truly cancel each other out or not really depends upon the problem. Uh, I'm not, not picky about that when doing the force diagrams. If we were going to solve problems purely from using graphing methods, then yes, it becomes much more crucial. 
but we'll be using Drake and algebra. So we have other mechanisms that we don't have to worry about tonight here. Mm -hmm. Not enough space. Or not enough one, either one. On the complex force diagram problem that you're going to get on test 1B, I will present the problem and you'll get the picture of how everything's, you know, the, the actual situation. And then on the next page, I've separated all the diagrams. Please draw your arrows on the separated diagram. Don't draw them on the original picture. Or for some of you who really like drawing on the original picture, please make sure you put your answer on the separated page also. Because you end up with a mess like this. And also, the, the picture of the problem before it's separated is much smaller space. And so, duplicated arrows like that really are going to look cluttered. Any questions on this before we do box on box on ground? There's actually a practical, and then we'll actually talk about something practical that we can learn from box on box on ground. <clears throat> oh, there is one other thing I want to mention over there. If you're looking, if you're talking to well, at this point, it depends on which tutor you have. I, I think the people doing tutoring for physics that are used to me long enough that they know what I'm talking about when I say force diagram. There's something else called the free body diagram, which textbooks tend to do. And I'll explain why I don't do those. The free body diagram looks very much like this, except instead of drawing a box, they, they represent it as a dot. I have normal force going up, I have weight going down. Uh -huh. And then the box, and then the ground. Ground, I have weight going up, and normal force going down. This is the traditional approach to it. And the reason I don't do that is even though for some students, this would make a lot more sense when you go to creating the equations of motion, it messes things up when you get to rotational motion because then where the force is actually applied makes a difference. And so if I had friction involved in a free body diagram, if I had, say friction like, like three forces acting like that, but in reality what's happening here is I have friction acting there, normal force there, and then weight acting like that. The fact that friction is not going through the center could make a difference. And so this is why I tend to do two-dimensional drawing instead of the, I guess the point is a Zero dimensional. But if you see free body diagram, it's just basically what I'm doing here, except I made it four dimensional. Box on box on ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the problem. Now I'm just going to draw the three objects separated so I have room to draw my arrows. My preference is to draw them in pretty much the same orientation, so one is above two above the ground. Not required, but I think it provides a little bit better mental clarity. Go to our checklist. Can we get rid of anything? Friction. Well, okay. I don't know, can we? Because now there's friction between one and two, kind of. Is there a desired motion? Does it look like I tried to draw this level? Yes. 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 Never mind. There's some people were unsure of that one. It, it was my intent to draw that level. Yeah, no desired motion on this problem. 
There's no other. There's item. no other. There is normal. Yep. All right. Uh, and there's gravitational force. Yes. Uh, let's do gravitational force first. What? Where is it acting, and on what? In which direction? It's acting down on the box. Which box? Both of them. Both of them. All right. So let's start with this one right here. So acting down on this. And where it comes in pairs, where's the other part of that pair? It's down on the ground, pointing up. Okay. And then? And then for two, it's the same thing. You have to draw another arrow where it is. Okay. All right, there is a mistake that I deliberately put into this. One of, one of the reasons why I do it is to introduce this new mistake. I've just seen this mistake. What's wrong? It's not a report required erasing anything. But maybe? Number two, you should actually Is there like air resistant? Wait. No, 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 sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. No. Sorry, Amy, say it again. You draw like another arrow on top of two. Oh, you mean uh, a weight going up like this? Yeah. No, that actually yeah. is normal. Rookie mistake number four. Four. <laughs> uh, drawing up weight on on the planet. Are you? There, saying? there is officially there is a gravitational pull between mass one and mass two. Yeah. Okay. It is insignificant. I weigh about 220 pounds. That's the, or somewhere around a thousand newtons. So that is the gravitational force on me. The magnitude of the gravitational force on me is a thousand newtons down, and a thousand newtons up on the Earth. There is a gravitational pull between me and the carpet, also, and that's going to be on the order of, you know, 10 to the negative 11, or smaller. We are ignoring those tiny little gravitational forces. Because if you start bringing those gravitational forces into it, like say between one and two, well, why not between the upper half of one and the lower half of one? Why not the upper, you know, how about this molecule in one and that molecule in one? This molecule in one and that molecule in two? I think I'm good. Yeah. There's, where do you stop? Ultimately, even if you're designing fighter jets, things where precision is incredibly important, you are not paying attention to those forces because they're so tiny. Now, if you have a weight acting up on two, that is a problem because this weight right here is between box one and the ground. All right, there is another mistake though, or a mistake. Does it have anything to do with the arrows not being in alignment with each other, or is that no. irrelevant? No, that, do they need like a subscript to identify them? Yeah. Do we need like two arrows going up? Yeah, I mean, you do need two arrows going up. Okay. Uh, but Justin, say it again. Subscripts to identify the two different oh. forces. If you do it like this, you are saying that the weight of box one and box two are the same. Okay. They are not automatically the same. Do not assume that they are the same. So we do need subscripts. Now, for the two on the ground, which one's one and which one's two? I don't, you know, it doesn't really matter. But one of them is one, one of them is two. Rookie mistake number five, ignoring subscripts. Mistake number six, putting exponents instead of subscripts. Putting what it? Exponents. I put it at oh. the top and I was like, that's Yeah, that's please don't. Uh, now, on a test, some students do that. Uh, I don't think I've taken off for that because I'm going with the spirit of it in that particular case. But, like, we're too smart for that. However, yeah, don't do superscripts. 
uh, with music. Now, if you've got a complex force diagram with just say it has 30 different forces on it, 15 pairs, and you decide you hate subscripts, you're gonna rebel and not do them because no one can tell you to put subscripts in. What I would do, so you have six different objects, all the weight acting down and then equal, and then you've got these forces on the bottom. I will give you credit for one, full credit for one of the pairs, and then I will mark off for all the other things you have marked by the same letters. Because only this and one of the ones on the ground need to be the same, and then this needs to be different. So, wouldn't we just not need a gravitational force on two though? Because it's already being acted, um, gravity's already acting on it because of one. You see what I mean? Like There's a gravitational just, pull on two. But, sorry, your argument is. Like if you're standing on a table, the table's got gravitational force already, but when you right. stand on top of it, you're adding more to it. So wouldn't there You're have not to adding be, more weight. Yeah. Okay. I think he's asking if we can treat one and two as the same object, if they're touching already. All right, so then it comes down to how do you know what objects are? I mean, suppose I wanted you to do upper half of one and bottom half of one. That's why on the complex force diagram, I split it apart for you. So I tell you exactly, hey, treat these things as one object, these things as one object. Okay. So, but there is a certain amount of, you get used to it. I mean, if they're talking about a box is going down a ramp, if there's no indication that the ramp is gonna move, then ultimately it'll be ramp earth as one object, box as another object. All right. Usually in a physics textbook problem, it's the one that they're asking you to find the acceleration for, for which they're asking you to find acceleration, uh, that needs to be its own object. Everything else can, may or may not be. Oh, we're not done here. All right, so gravitational force, done. Normal. There's going to be an upward force acting on both one and two. So one acting up on one. I'm going to call this y sub one. And, then and where's the other part of that there? That one's going to be on box two. The box two. Because box two is pushing up on box one. Okay, so there's going to be like, okay. And then there's another normal force on box two pushing up. Yeah. Pushing up on box two. Box yes. two. What about y two? And then pushing down on earth. Is there any more, or is that it? That's it. Okay, that's cool. One's touching two, two is touching the ground. So we got normal force pairs at each of those connections. Uh, I guess we'll throw in another one, rookie mistake number six. Normal force between objects not touching. Yeah, the number of students who want, to, who want to put weight one up on box two or have a normal force between one and the ground, it, too many. So there's no normal force period between objects that aren't touching? Correct. Okay, because they need contact, right? Okay. There are no Jedi powers here. I cannot just wave my hand and make people fly across the room. <laughs> Unless your mass is large enough. True. <laughs> that would not be a Jedi power at that point, though. <laughs> even then, we probably wouldn't even be able to see you. All right. About to have a practical application here. Because sometimes physics does lead to practical applications. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to do this on the ground outside. Person standing on a bathroom scale. Okay. 
Hey, Catherine's here. Pretending that this is the ground. A real life demonstration of a stick figure drawing. <laughs> it's almost lifelike. And for those who are watching this on film, uh, just to use your imagination. Or go into the bathroom. <laughs> Stand on your stick. All right, so force diagram we got person, we have scale, <laughs> we have brown. The force diagrams are not pretty much like what we have over there. I'm going to change subscripts. I, I personally like the subscripts to have some meaning because later on, if I'm using it, I don't have to go back and go, wait a second, which one was Y73? Uh, oh, that's right. The one attached to the, to the bucket. So I have Y sub P, W sub P, and then on the scale, I've got Y sub P, W sub scale, or S, and then Y sub S, and then on the ground, I have W sub P, W sub S, and then going down, Y sub S. Now, I've dropped so many things on this scale as part of the demonstration things that it doesn't actually, it's off. But it's still, the principle still holds. All right. So as I stand on this, assuming that we're working correctly, what is the scale measure? Mm. I heard, started here and then suddenly you said something. I missed the boat. Are you measuring your weight or are you measuring like the forces? Are you asking for forces or weight? You're a thousand meters. I, I'm asking for the, what? Like pound or look? Uh, not, not looking for units, just. <laughs> so. The weight, weight would be an answer. Yeah. So are you going with it measures by weight? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm glad you said that. I didn't want to lead you along. As much as 